and that Rilke always closed the shutters when he visited her to prevent passers-by from looking in. In the semi-darkness of these summer days, they celebrated their honeymoon. It was a passionate affair, with Lou always, at first, being overawed by Rilke's male aggressiveness before her greater maturity asserted itself. Then she would take her young lover into the garden behind the house and teach him to walk barefoot over dewy grass. She would tell him the names of her favorite flowers, make him listen to the wind in the trees and the rushing water of the brook. Her husband had taught her to observe the animals at daybreak, and now she passed this knowledge on to her young lover. For the first time in his life, Rilke entered into a real relationship with nature, a simple, direct, and non-literary relationship. Lou communicated to him her sense of wonder at the oneness of the world, her joy of living, and her vitality. The healthy vigor of her sensuous enjoyment made him feel ashamed of the mawkish sentimentality of his adolescent dreams. A new world opened before his eyes, less tortured than the one he had known. He felt as if reborn. His whole life, he now realized, had been influenced by the false piety and the artificial values of his mother. She was responsible for the unhealthy exaltations which alienated him from reality. He had met Lou just in time. She would help him find himself. Inspired by his love for her and with her guidance, he tried to express his feelings more simply and directly. This was not easy, and many poems he wrote during this extremely productive time reflect his pre wolfrothausen mood, as he called it, that floating between day and dream which is so typical of his first verses. But with others, one feels the effort toward greater concreteness. The land is bright and dark ripples the arbor. You speak in whispers while I watch with awe. And every word you say is like an altar, built by my faith upon my quiet shore. I love you. You're sitting in a chair, your cool white hands asleep as in a bed. My life is lying like a silver spool within your hands. Release my thread. Boldly, this com poem comes to grips with the love theme, first by setting the scene, land and arbor, an allusion to the arbor in Wolfrothshausen, where they spent so much of their time. Lou is 